Las Vegas, it's just another bright and gaudy night. But the skies are clear, the wind is down, and tomorrow, only 80 miles away, is D-Day. Traveling 65 miles northwest of Las Vegas on US Highway 95, we arrive at the Nevada test site. Established in 1951, the Nevada test site stands above all other nuclear sites as the most bombed location on Earth. The test site was picked in 1951 out of three other sites here. The reason that the scientists came here is that they were looking for a place to do on-continent nuclear weapons tests. Uh, at the time, they were doing all the nuclear weapons tests on the Pacific. It was very expensive. President Truman wanted to see if they could find a location in the United States to do the smaller, lower-yield nuclear tests on-continent. And they ended up with the Nevada test site. At the time, it was called the Nevada Proving Grounds. When we bring people through Mercury, which is the base camp of operations for all the activities out here at the Nevada test site, they come through a small pass. The first thing that visitors see when they come to the test site is the Frenchman Dry Lake Bed. That's where the first atmospheric tests were conducted out here on the test site. The first test was conducted on January 27, 1951. Fourteen total tests were conducted out there on Frenchman Flat. And what people see when they go out to Frenchman Flat is the historic structures that remain from those atmospheric days. There's the hotel, motel walls. What the scientists were doing with those is they built the faces of those out of different types of materials, brick, mortar, concrete block. And they wanted to see what the pressures from the blast would do to those walls, what would stand up, what wouldn't stand up. You also see an old railroad bridge that is sitting out there. It's pretty remarkable because it's, it's one of the things that really gives you a good idea what the heat and blast effects. You've got these very thick I-beams that have been bent, almost like spaghetti. There's some concrete domes. What we know about the principles of hardening of concrete were developed out there on Frenchman Flat at the test site. The scientists used different types of mixtures of concrete, of mortar, mixed with rebar, different sizes of rebar, so they could understand how to harden concrete. One of the more unusual things that's also out there on Frenchman Flat is the uh, old bank vault. The standards that U.S. bank vaults are built today are built based on the tests that they did out there at the site. And you can see where the sides have been peeled away from the blast, but the contents that were inside that vault at the time of the blast survived all of that. So what they were looking at is, is construction of items, how they would withstand the heat and blast. They weren't looking at the, the effects of the radiation, but how things would hold up to the heat and blast. And so a lot of modern day standards that we have for structures that we have now, bank vaults for a multitude of things, have come about as a result of the atmospheric testing that took place there on Frenchman Flat during the atmospheric testing days.
ice cap was to be the last underground nuclear test that was going to be conducted here on the test site before the moratorium was signed in 1992. But events of the world caught up with us here and that test was never conducted. As a result, the divider test in September of 1992 ended up being the last underground test that was conducted. So what you have at ice cap is the tower, and inside that tower is the canister that would have held the nuclear device. Uh, an 1,800-foot hole is there. All the cables are on the ground, and some of the support trailers are still sitting there. Those support trailers is where all the information would have come up the cables and would have been recorded. And as well as a part of redundancy, those signals would have been sent here to the control point and recorded in the control point. This is the control point at the Nevada test site. The control point is where everything happens on the day of an experiment. All the scientists, the technician, the security people, anybody that's associated with the experiment are here in the control point. This is where all the information comes into to tell the scientist if their experiment has been successful. In essence, it becomes the nerve center for the test site on the day of an experiment. The Dan Crater was done in 1962, July of 1962. It was part of the Plowshare program. What they were trying to see is if you could take uh, a very large device, in this case it was 104 kilotons, and use it to dig a canal, a lake, uh, if you could blast away mountains to make a, a pass for a highway system. They wanted to see if you could use a nuclear device to dig with. The answer to the question is yes, but this nation never did it because of the residual radiation that's left behind. But what you've got with Sedan Crater is a big hole in the ground that's 1,800 feet across and about 300 feet deep, and it shows you the force that you can have from a 104 kiloton nuclear device. The Apple II houses, uh, that was a test that was done in 1955. It was a civil defense effects test. The civil defense agency of the time that was here in the United States wanted to see how modern Americana would withhold or withstand uh, a nuclear attack on the United States. If you remember, a lot of people may have read the history and seen, and, and for those that were alive during the time, the mentality was was duck and cover, a red under every bed. And so it was on the top of everybody's mind about safety from, from nuclear weapons. So what the Civil Defense Agency of the time did was create um, American homes, wood structures, brick structures, two-story homes with basements. And they outfitted these homes with everything that you would find in a modern 1955 home. Uh, they put mannequins inside, they put food, they put cars, they put radios that were working. Everything in the house was fully operational that you would find of the time.
after the test, they came in to see what the effects were on that American home. So that gave the scientists an idea of the effect that was going to happen. The closer you were to the ground zero from the blast, you could see certain type of damage, and then the farther out, you would see what the damage effects would be. So this allowed them to do the type of modeling that they did back in 1955, so that they, as a civil defense agency, could prepare some type of plans that uh, the American citizens could use. Testing out here has been done in a variety of ways. They would fly the airplanes out of a Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque and drop the devices out of an airplane. They suspended devices from balloons. They put them on top of wooden towers. They put them on top of steel towers. They shot one out of a cannon. That was through the 1950s. Then with the limited test ban treaty, we went to underground testing. And tests were done anywhere from 600 feet to 2,000 feet underground. In all, the United States has done 1,054 nuclear weapons tests, and of that, 928 of those were done here at the Nevada test sites. come out here it's as simple as, as just providing us with some very basic information we'll bring you out here in a bus and we'll tour you the 200 miles that you'll drive in a day seeing the sights of this piece of property that's larger than the state of Rhode Island 